Okay, so thank you everyone for joining today. Um, my name is Tasha. I'm an international officer of the University of Leeds. Um, I'm joined by two of our current um, students, international students, Marcelo and Alia. They will be telling um, you a little bit more about themselves in a few slides and also talking through some of the topics in the presentation today. Um, but I will start off with just a little bit about the University of Leeds um, in case there's um, any new information that you don't know. And then we'll go on to the student life and opportunities part. And there will be plenty of time at the end for you to ask any questions that you have. Um, you can type those in the chat or you can wait until the end um, and raise your hand and ask them verbally. Um, and obviously any questions that you have for our ambassadors would be great. Um, and you can contact them directly afterwards as well. Um, so the University of Leeds um, is consistently ranked in the top 100 universities um, in the world, in the QS world ranking. Um, we focus on academic and kind of the whole student experience and we have some great academics and research happening at the university. Um, we are the fifth most targeted UK university by graduate recruiters which means that a lot of our students are in graduate roles. We work closely with employers um, both in Leeds in the UK and internationally um, and they see Leeds graduates as a real asset to their companies. Um, we're the 35th most international university in the world um, in the Times Higher Education 2020, uh, we do have a really diverse um, international community, both on our campus and in the city, and third in the UK for student experience, and we will be talking about the student experience more in the presentation. Um, so for those of you that don't know, the Leeds is in the north of England, so it's one of the largest cities in the UK. There's really excellent transport links, and um, it does have its own airport more so for European destinations. And it's a direct train to Manchester International Airport. It's really student friendly. There's a few universities in Leeds, um, the University of Leeds being the largest of those, um, which means there's a real student community both on our campus and in the city. Um, outside of London, it is one of the UK's largest centres for business, legal and financial services. And it is a centre in the north of England for sports, the arts, theatre and um, opera and music. Um, so for sports, we do have a rugby, football and cricket stadium all in Leeds. Um, this just gives you a bit of a feel of the campus. So the dark red points and the highlighted area are all the University of Leeds campus, but it is only a short 10 to 15 minute walk into the city centre, which means that our students spend a lot of time across both of them. Um, even when it comes to working as well, part-time jobs um, can be both on the campus and in the city, so you get the community feel of a campus, um, but you're kind of located near the city as well. Um, we are a Russell Group University, which is a group of 24 research intensive universities in the UK, and it means that we're really known for our research, and that does feed down into all levels, um, from our students doing PhDs, right down to undergraduate students being taught with up-to-date research. Um, we're one of the largest universities in the UK, so we have about 38,000 students, probably a few more over the last year, um, from over 170 different countries and lots of undergraduate and master's programmes to choose from. I will now pass you on to Alia, who will tell you a little bit more about herself. Um, can everyone hear me all right? Hello? Yes, we can yes, hear you. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alia, and I'm currently a final year um, undergraduate student studying physics. I'm actually finished with my degree um, now. Uh, and um, I, I'm very active in the in, in a lot of our societies, like the um, currently I'm the STEM director of the Women in Leadership Society. I was the vice president of the Indonesian Society in my second year. Um, I'm also a very active member of the Swing Dancing Society, um, Salsa as well, and the Vegan Vegetarian Society. Outside of being a link to Leeds Ambassador, I'm also a course representative at the School of Physics and Astronomy and also a student mentor at Zero Gravity. Um, yes, yeah, nice to meet you all. Thanks, Alia. And Marcelo? Well, nice to meet you all. Uh, I'm Marcelo. I'm a master's student on the MSc Global Strategy and Innovation Management uh, in Loops, Leeds University Business School. 
I was born in Montevideo, Uruguay, Latin America. And just to let you know a little bit more about me, I like topics like innovation, digital transformation, sustainability. Also, my hobbies are watching football, listening to music, hanging out with friends, typical normal things. And my favorite spot on campus is LUU, Leeds University Union, that you will get to know a little bit more about it just in a few minutes. And my favorite spot in the city will be the city center area. So nice to meet you all. Thank you very much. And I will pass back to Alia, who will talk a little bit more about the union. Um, so the Leeds University Union, or LUU, as the students call it, is sort of like the main social hub of the campus. Um, it's home to um, 300, over 300 clubs and societies. It hosts a lot of events, such as um, concerts and student-led activities and stuff like that. There's a lot of help, help and support that you can get from the student union as well, um, start ranging from um, job link, where you can um, get help to get uh, to, to apply for part-time jobs, to um, student sort of ed uh, general advice for students um, and international students as well, and student voice initiative. So if you have concerns or you um, you want to, um, you feel like your voice isn't being heard, you can speak to the um, uh, student representatives at the student union and they'll be um, happy to help you out with that. And there's a lot of um, uh, places that you can get food and drinks from in the, in the student union. Um, there's a lot of restaurants. We also have cafes and uh, an optician, opticians as well, um, a uh, place where you can get official uni apparel, a supermarket and all, all sorts of things. It's, it's a really great place for students to spend their time in during their degree. Yeah, so uh, as you can see in these in these pictures, the one on the left is the sort of the facade of the student union, and um, there's the advice op office right there. Um, we have a co-op, a supermarket, and that uh, on the right hand side at the bottom, I think, is one of our um, student led events. Um, I it, it might be a gig um, that happened at some point, but it was um, we do that regularly. So if you're a student, at least you'll never be bored because there's always something happening, um, whether it's um, at night or during the day the student union. And um, if you want to talk about, about the clubs and societies, maybe how you got involved um, in some of them, as you've joined so many in your time. So many. <laughs> yeah. Um, joining clubs and societies is a fantastic way to meet new friends. Um, as I said before, I'm part of, currently I'm most active in swing dancing, salsa dancing. Um, and women in leadership. So um, yeah, as I said, the university, um, the Lee Student Union has over 300 clubs and societies. So anything you can think of, whether it's sports, general interest, dancing, music, um, nationality sort of based um, societies like the Indonesian society, for example, or faith-based like um, the, the Islamic society, the Christian society, anything you can think of, we probably have it. If we don't have it, you can always set up your own society. You all you need to all you need to have is a minimum number of ten people and who are interested in joining the society, and you can set it up your own. I mean, it's a fantastic way to meet new friends. I've met most of my really really close friends from from swing dancing, and I really really recommend you getting yourself involved in these activities. Um, so volunteering um, as a student, um, as a student in the University of Leeds, you can easily um, sign, your, sign yourself up for volunteering activities. It's get, it's really great for your um, for improving your skills, bettering your well being, and also to just um, amp up your um, CV for job applications and stuff like that because it shows that you care about things other than your studies, um, and you have a passion and that you're willing to go out of your way for to to be involved in these sort of things. I personally am involved in. Um, Outside of my studies, I am a zero a mentor at Zero Gravity, so I help um, underprivileged students get into the top UK universities, and I'm also a, an online math tutor, um, completely for free, um, just because I I I generally feel like um, these people need help, and it's just it's a it's a nice thing to do outside of outside of your degree. You get to it's a it's a nice feeling to be able to help people. Um, I feel. And um, you can easily um, find volunteering activities um, through this through the un through the university through the student union. Um, also from the from JobLink or the Career Center, um, there's a lot of uh, vol volunteering opportunities that are that are advertised on their website. Thank you very much, Alia. And I think anything that you can be involved in while you're studying at university and that can make you stand out and have that additional experience when you're applying for jobs is great. Um, so ambassador roles and positions on campus, 
Um, obviously, we have some of our ambassadors here. Marcello, if you wanted to talk through your experience. Yep, Thank you. sure. Uh, as you were saying, you can find different opportunities that can impact your student life throughout the university. Uh, this is one way that Liz is always looking to enhance your student experience, not just time, but also living here. For example, myself, I'm a link to Leeds Ambassador, which is a part-time job I got here and where you can talk to me anytime via my Unibody chat. And we also are here, for example, participating in this webinar and we have done do diverse tasks like video, social media takeovers, talk to students in events around the world and lots and lots of things. Uh, other positions and role also include open days, for example, academic scholar support, welcome and orientation, and you could support different administrative offices throughout the university. So you can know that you can find your place here and also a part time job that could help you to have some sort of income and support throughout your studies in Leeds. Okay, great. Thanks, Marcella. Um, and to add to that, there are um, lots of other opportunities for part-time jobs. So as an international student, you will be able to work for up to 20 hours a week during term time, which is one of the reasons that the ambassador role um, is great because it's very flexible um, with when they can work and what they can do around studies. But lots of um, businesses, both on the campus and in the city, um, are very aware and, and have lots of jobs with shorter shifts available. That's again one of the plus sides of being located so close to the city. It's very easy to be studying on the campus and working part-time in the city centre as well. There are lots of um, resources available in the union and job link um, to support you with part-time work um, and careers afterwards, which I'll go on to after this. Um, and it's, it's great to work. Um, whether it's placement years, internships, anything that you can do that um, kind of enhances your degree is always great. So a lot of the experience that our ambassadors are getting um, is really useful and gonna be really useful when it comes to applying for jobs, presenting, all of those things. Um, so internships and placements, some of you will have the opportunity to do a placement year um, during your time, or you might find short internships. And we do have a lot in place um, to support that. Um, so there are lots of opportunities and an internship programme to help you to put you in touch with um, companies. We work really closely with lots of different industries. We even have some um, students doing their placement years in different um different departments throughout the university. Some of your courses as well may have um, projects and field work opportunities. So it's really important to have a look on your course page when you're deciding between courses and see what's available. Um, and the great thing is, I'll go into it a bit more on the next side in the Career Centre, is that you do have um, dedicated employability teams within your faculty and school. So you'd have employability officers that know the areas of work that you'll be going into that are able to support you. They have contacts with companies um, and placement contacts within your school. Um, so you're really well placed as long as you use all these resources to be able to um, kind of look for placement years and also career opportunities afterwards. Um, so that brings us on to the career centre that we have. We have um, lots of support available so within the faculties and schools that you would be studying in but also general support so um, lots of information resources a career portal and guidance they can help you with things from um, when you first join us um, booking a meeting straight away when you may not be sure what you want to do um, afterwards through to helping you write applications, doing mock interviews with you before some of your kind of first major interviews when you're looking for graduate roles. There are also resources specifically for international students. Um, so we can help with finding work in the UK and internationally. We have global careers as well. We've had global career weeks for different countries and um, to link up with employers last year. That has become um, easier, obviously, with the virtual world to do that with lots of different employers. Um, and we also have events and workshops. So we do have employers that will come on and do talks and workshops and engage with our students um, and do guest lectures sometimes as well throughout your degree. So there's lots of career support available. Um, and I think one of the main things is utilising it um, and booking appointments regularly and asking the questions and looking at the resources. 
And then one more way to enhance your degree if you are studying undergraduate is obviously study abroad. We have a really um, great exchange programme with over 300 different universities. Um, and it's really great experience when you're looking to apply afterwards, whether you've worked or done study abroad, it's something that can um, kind of make you stand out from the other students and you get to experience, you know, for some of you, three different cultures possibly by the time you're graduating. Um, so it's a really great thing to do and um, you'll probably see by some of the pictures on the site that you also um, get to do lots of exciting non-academic fun stuff as well and have a really great year. Um, and then we'll talk a bit about student life and support, if Marcelo wants to go over that, thank you. Sure. Uh, well, here we have a dedicated international student support, which includes, for example, welcome and orientation programs, personal tutors. For example, I remember that when I arrived, I had a meeting with my personal tutor that conscientiously was my master director. And I remember how we discussed how I was feeling the first couple of weeks, how I was, how I was setting in leads so it's really useful for the first few weeks also you will see that nearby you'll find the leads to make a center practice sorry where you could attend gp appointments and also as alia was mentioned we have the uu where the global cafe and events are held which is a really good opportunity to meet new friends and get new connections because everybody that comes here the first few weeks and months are also all everybody is looking to making friends so uh, don't be shy that's my advice and go to these events that uh, you i'm sure you'll find people like you that will be looking for uh, making new friends. And uh, moving on to the facilities that we have around here, uh, the university is continually investing in new facilities and buildings on our campus. We have four libraries on campus that offer a variety of working environments that suit you and they are open till late seven days a week during term time. This includes quiet and group style spaces that I have used quite a lot during May and April. Uh, also, you can find information on the facilities available in the academic schools on the course pages, for example, laboratories, financial labs, and a range of engineering facilities. Then we also have the Edge, which is our state-of-the-art fitness suit, suite with a pool, sauna, sport hall, and over 220 exercise classes. And the good news is that if you live in university accommodation, a membership for the Edge is included for off-peak times, so bear that in mind. Uh, then we move to the accommodation, uh, which is, as it says here, guaranteed for duration of your study. You also find a wide, wide choice of facilities and costs from self-catered to catered residences. As we were saying, the ed membership is included and you will find a variety of locations. Most of them are nearby the campus and some of them are designated for postgraduate residences. Uh, if I will talk about my experience, I'm currently living in San Marcos since last September, and I must say that I'm very satisfied overall. The rooms are pretty comfy with a desk to study and your own private bathroom. We also have a and a common space in the flat. Plus the flat means I've got there really easy going, so everything works just fine. Uh, San Mark also has a common space by the entrance where you have a pool table and a ping pool table to play and also a couple of treadmills if you fancy doing exercise. Uh, plus the accommodation, as I said, this one in particular is only five minutes away from campus, so it's really convenient if you are, for example, running late to a lecture or a seminar, you are really close by. So overall, San Marks have been very good to me, a great choice. I'm, I'm really satisfied. So uh, I suggest you really look forward and check these accommodations that university offers. Great, thank you very much. And um, finally, obviously, Alia and Marcelo are here from our link to lead scheme, which is um, current international students. Um, so just some places that you can find all of the students. So we've got um, students from all over the world studying a range of different courses from undergraduate to PhDs. Um, so it's worth having a look on the website um, at anyone else you can contact. Obviously, you can contact Alia and Marcelo as well. And um, they also write blogs from things like a day in the life to see what students get up to um, through to finding placements, finding graduate jobs. Um, so lots to read there as well. And there's also social media um, where I know Ali has done takeovers before of kind of her days and weeks as a student. So that's really interesting to have a look at and you get a bit of a feel for life on the campus and in the city of Leeds. Um, so that brings us to the end of the presentation.
um, to allow plenty of time for you to ask any questions that you have. Um, if you have a think of those, type them in the chat. There might be a few in there already that I've not seen. Um, and I'll do my best to answer them. And if they're kind of student experience based, then obviously we've got our ambassadors with us. So thank you very much for listening. Um, one question, first of all, um, about um, medicine. Um, for medicine, it is very um, competitive, extremely competitive for international students. Um, I would recommend having a look on the course page. There is an admissions process in there um, and also a selection process guidance that you can have a look at and there's different tests that you need to do. Um, so yeah, have a look at the course page for that one. Are there any other questions? Either in the chat or ask them. Um, I'm getting one in the private chat, Cassia, but yeah. it's again about medicine. Um, so yeah. students interested in an MBBS or MD program, and I was just kind of wanting to get some details. Yes, so we do do medicine. Um, it is the MBCHB that we do. It is five years, um, and I'm not sure how aware students are, but yes, Ali has put the link in the chat. Thank you. So to have a look at the course page, um, there is a cap on international spaces for medicine, so it is very competitive. We would be looking at A-level equivalent, um, three A's or plus, and we also need an aptitude test, which for us would be the BMAT. For some other universities, um, it could be the UCAT, so it is worth double checking um, and reading all the information and guidance on the course page. Any other questions um, about any other subject areas? We have one from YouTube that's specifically for Alia, actually. Mm -hmm. So I think it's... Um, um, the student says uh, you had so many roles during your time as a student. Can you go into more detail about what they were and how you managed? Uh, and apologies if you already covered this. Yeah, um, absolutely. So um, it does it does sound like a lot, but um, so currently I'll just talk about the stuff that I did in, in final year. Uh, I mentioned I was in I was the STEM director for women in leadership. I um, volunteer as a student mentor and I'm a late ladies ambassador and I work part-time as a waitress as well it sounds like a lot of things but um so basically how I manage my time is that um luckily as a link to leads ambassador um our work hours are very flexible so you can basically work anytime you want depending on what task you get given so let's say for example this is only one hour out of a week's time and then um for um you know I, I make sure that I I, I I allocate time for for university for um the stuff that I enjoy, like swing dancing and salsa dancing, that's like an hour maximum, maybe maximum four hours a week. Um, I try to sort of divide my days into sort of into into threes. So I don't know if that makes sense. So there's 24 hours in a day, eight hours of those I would use, eight hours of that I would use, I would use for sleeping, eight hours for doing work, whatever it is, whether it's uni work or work work, like link to lease and um, sort of volunteering, like um, um, math tutoring and student mentoring, that kind of stuff. And the eight hours I would use to do whatever I want. So I, that can be for dancing or hanging out with friends or that kind of stuff. So it's, it, it sounds like a lot, but it is, it's, it is very manageable um, as long as you, as, as long as you manage your time um, well, I guess it's, you can join as many things as you can and still enjoy um, your non-academic life, but also do well at university um i don't know if that helps <laughs> sounds like you're very structured with your time i try my best <laughs> <laughs> and there are um obviously support things and i think personal tutors a lot of the time can help with managing um time and workloads when you first join the university and throughout so there are, is a lot of support available for managing time Um, foundation or international year one from another uni? Um, it depends on the foundation year um, and it depends on the international year one. 
Um, for that student, I'm going to put the international office um, mailbox and it might be worth them getting in touch. We do accept a range of foundation years and we do have very few international year ones. We don't normally accept transfers into second year as a general rule. Um, that would, it would depend on what was studied previously. Um, but for that one, uh, we'd need a bit more information as to exactly what they're studying to look into it. So I don't know if the person on YouTube will be able to see that email address, but hopefully it will get to them at one point. <laughs> yeah, we'll pass it on. No worries. I'm just getting another question in a private message. It's about um, someone, they're, they're asking on behalf of a friend. They've got um, 2260 band three in UCAT, and they just want to find out if they're eligible for an MBBS or do they still need to give another entrance exam? Um, it depends exactly what they've studied. Um, for, oh, we would be looking at individual subject grades, whether they've studied A levels, whether it's equivalent, um, and then they would all be. Everyone would need to do the aptitude test. Okay. Okay. Um, he's in CBSC. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, I would. I would recommend oh. also um, just emailing the the admissions office for for that for medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's also worth bearing in mind that um, our entry requirements are any guidance for medicine. Um, it doesn't guarantee um, a space and for students applying, you get five UCAS choices, but you actually can only use four of them on medicine. So you are needing to consider one other subject area. Just due to how competitive it is. Um, the other question we commonly get, I don't, I don't see it coming up now, but is often about um, English language requirements mm -hmm. and if you accept any kind of alternates to IELTS and things like that. We accept a range of different um, English language tests. So obviously IELTS, um, we do accept and that tends to be the one that's listed on the course pages. But there is a link, I'll just find it for all the different ones. Um, so TOEFL and Pearson's that we accept as well. Um, I'll put that in the chat for them. And it's got it under undergraduate and postgraduate as well. And obviously for anyone studying in the um, UK as well, IGCSE um, can meet the requirement as well. We are still open for international applications um, through UCAS for this September, um, but obviously some courses are starting to fill up and we do have some that are closed. Um, so it depends what you want to apply for. Um, and I would recommend applying as soon as possible. So you have time um, to have the application reviewed, receive an offer, um, arrive. The UCAS date um, isn't closed. The January date is for UK students, international students can apply after. But it does depend on the subject area. I do know that we have some courses that are already closed or are likely to close. Um, Oh, yeah. Um, it depends if it is. Um, so I'll go, I'll reply to the medicine part. Medicine is, um, you have to apply by the 15th of October for the following year. So medicine would have closed in October. So um, to answer that question, no, you wouldn't be able to apply for medicine for this September. That would be next year. Um, it depends on the programme. I assume this is undergraduate business courses. Um, our final stage admissions deadline for postgraduate business courses um, hasn't come yet so you can still apply um, and as far as I'm aware undergraduate business courses most of them are still open but as I said um, all of our programs in the business school are very popular um, so I'd recommend applying as soon as possible and maybe double checking before you do. If a course is closed it shouldn't be available 
Um, we don't have any foundation courses for medicine. We only accept direct entry to something that is equivalent to an A-level or IB. No, no applications for 2022 for medicine. So it would be the 15th of October. It's normally the deadline. You can double check for next year, but it should still be 15th of October. Any other questions coming through on the YouTube? No, not yet. Not nothing at this point. I'm just going to say as well, if anyone's got any questions, um, yeah, we're still online for a bit. So just type in your questions in the chat box and we'll try and answer them. Thank you. Um, while we're waiting for the questions to come through, Cassie, I was just going to ask you or maybe the student ambassadors as well, like if there's one thing that each of you would say would be to take away from today's seminar presentation, what do you think that would be? for the students um i'll start to give give the ambassadors a time to chance to think um i would say um using and kind of accessing all the support that we have mentioned um so it's great hearing about it but obviously it's a bit in advance for these students but when you're arriving things like being involved in societies as a way to settle in, make friends. The career centre support is there for you to access. We recommend using that as soon as you start um, and just knowing all the support that's available to you and, and using it. Alia, would you like to go first? Uh, can everyone hear me? Because it says my internet connection is unstable. I can hear you. Okay, <laughs> we can hear you. Fantastic. Um, I can stay away from today. Uh, I mean, Kasha pretty much pretty much has said everything. But in terms of, um, I'm saying this from a student's perspective. Um, I would say once you do come to Leeds, um, everyone will be on the same boat. So if you're worried about, um, making new friends or if you're shy, um, if you don't, if you're if you feel a bit uncomfortable or awkward in social situations, um, everybody will be feeling the same way and everyone will want to make new friends because obviously if you're a fresher you don't know anyone you want to you want to be part of the community community you want to fit in I would say just try your best to get out of your comfort zone and just speak to random people because chances are they're going to be your friends for the for the rest of your degree um, because that does happen to me in first year um, you know as, a, as an international student I felt quite out of place coming here oh I, I don't look like the rest of the people here and I feel like you know uh, English being my second language I feel a bit insecure um, being surrounded by native English speakers um, but I, I, I got to Leeds and I realized how friendly everybody was um, I didn't feel like discriminated toward, uh, against um, at any point during my um, degree and yeah just join as many clubs and societies as you, as you can I mean to a to a consider I mean <laughs> an acceptable number not I mean I wouldn't recommend it to join 20 societies and be active in every single one of them obviously you need to study as well but um uh yeah and if you have any questions obviously uh, uh anything anything at all you can always email uh, me or Marcelo or the rest of the ambassadors if you feel like you're a bit shy um asking your questions here uh, we'd be happy to help Marcelo anything to add yeah, well, on top of what you both said, I would say that you will need to explore the campus, get to know and go to the libraries. We have plenty of cafes and places to study and uh, you will get to know people. Like we were in your position seven months ago. You may think that now we know a lot of things and how do we learn all this, but we were the same as you with lots of questions, lots of doubts. Uh, as, as Alia was saying, we're freshers. Uh, and the way it is, is just go outside, meet new people and go to the UUL, use a great place to study, hang out, um, attend events and societies. And I'm sure that you will have a terrific time in Leeds University and the city as a whole is really welcoming. And I'm sure you will find uh, the friends and, and, and use the services that you need to have a, a really good time. And this will be a once in a lifetime experience. I really, at least for me, it's been so um, get ready to 
of course study but also have a great experience and have fun and meet new people so yeah Great, thank you very much. Um, the first question, support for paid part-time jobs or paid internships, I'm not exactly sure um, what they mean by that. Um, so if you could just double check and then we can answer it. Um, about whether we're on campus this year or still um, partly online, um, our plan is to move further and further towards um, face-to-face -face. so we do have face-to-face -face teaching on our campus it's kind of larger um, lectures and stuff that is online and that still might be the plan for September but more and more face-to-face -face activity for students so students do need to be here and they kind of can't study um, remotely anymore because there is face-to-face -face, um, activity on the campus but I will pass it on to our ambassadors who are actually um, studying their degrees at the moment so I'll have an experience um, so um, have you had um, lots of face-to-face -face teaching particularly recently since the UK started to open well it's open now <laughs> <laughs> yeah so for me um uh, in my final year, so this year, uh, we do have, I would say most most of them were were, um, were on campus. Um, there was one that was um, where the lectures were completely online because the the number of students that uh, was in was enrolled in the course was over a hundred or something, so they couldn't accommodate everyone in the in the lecture theater because back in September till December last semester, um, there was still um, COVID restrictions set in place by the government. Um, I reckon now it is more relaxed. And also I think you're now, for most lectures, um, at least um, from what I know, um, they're quite flexible in terms of how you how you can attend the lecture. So you can, it's, it's normally it's like a hybrid hybrid system where you can attend um, your lectures on campus, but you can also choose to, to attend it remotely if you, if you feel that is better for you to do so. Yeah, from my side, uh, I remember that semester one. Um, Marcelo, do you want to add? Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I think it's okay. Alia that we're losing, not you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying that in, I remember that in semester one, we used what it was called the blended approach. We basically was that the lectures were held online, either in Zooms or Teams, and the seminars, which were uh, classes that were. Um, with fewer people, like 10 or 15 people, were held face-to-face. Uh, -face. So even though we had lectures that were delivered online, we, we always we have face-to-face -face instances with professors and also classmates. Then in semester two, as the COVID restrictions were lifted, we have a couple of lectures that were also held face-to-face -face, and others were still held online. Actually, I remember that I had a module that the professor asked the students whether they would like to have it online or face-to-face -face, and the students choose to have it online because you may think that online it would be worse in terms of I don't know uh, getting to know people or learning but actually for example lectures get recorded so you get when you are studying for an exam you go to Minerva which is our intranet like platform to with all the student resources and all that and uh, you can see a recording and watch it again and over and so it has some pros and cons as everything like face to face or online but um, I feel like the way that for me I studied here in the university was really good and yeah it was a blended approach and I feel like the university as uh, you were saying uh, as the restrictions were lifted they are leaning towards more face-to-face -to -face instances and I think that it might be the case for the next year academic year. Thank you very much both of you. Um, so for the 20 hours of work, you can only work 20 hours for term time, um, whoever you work for, employers, um, as part of providing your visa, they would all be aware um, that you can only work 20 hours during term time. I'm not sure if that's exactly what the question is, um, but hopefully that helps. <laughs> Are there any other questions coming through? I don't think there's anything else um, yet to answer at this point. Okay. Um, 
happy to wait for a minute and see if anything else comes through, if there's anything that we can expand on um, further. There is, I just want to say to all the students who've attended here, there is a copy of this seminar going to be available on YouTube um, and it'll also be sent to anyone who's not been able to attend today. So yeah, do feel free to circulate this to any of your friends if they're interested. Thank you very much. Um, I will put the link to link to Leeds in the chat as well, uh, where you can find the information. Um, you can find Ali and Marcelo and any of our other ambassadors. If anyone does um, think of questions afterwards um, that they want to ask. So if there's nothing else, Rena, shall we um, yeah. finish off? Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Thank you right. so much, Alia, Marcelo, and Cassia today for your time. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thanks for joining, everyone. Have a good Thank rest you. of your evening. Thank you very Thank much, you. everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.